Hey everybody, it's Miss Taylor. Um, I just wanted to take a minute um, just to say hey and tell you all I miss you so much um, and to let you know that there are some things at your house that you can use as painting supplies that you may not even know about. So two things I'm going to show you today are tea and coffee. I've actually got, because um, we really don't drink like iced tea or sweet tea at my house, but I've got a lot of hot teas. Um, so this is actually a passion tea. It's hot pink um, when you actually first see it. But the neat thing about it is when you put it on paper, it turns blue, crazy. The second thing is just coffee. Um, this is some from what we made this morning. It's gotten cold. It was the last little bit that was in our pot. Um, and I just decided to show you some painting with it. So how I'm gonna show you this is I'm gonna show you how to make different washes and then you can kind of make up how you paint on your own. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a scale. I'm gonna make a scale for tea and I'm gonna make a scale for coffee. So first thing I'm gonna do, when I get my tea, I'm gonna hold it and show you. Um, I wanna use it like how I would paint. So I'm gonna dip it in the cup and I'm gonna wipe it off on the sides and then I'm gonna start in and I'm going to just kind of paint a little square. So this is just so that you can see my scale, okay? I'm going to make about three different values which are going to show you that you can have a light, a mid-tone, and a dark. So watch that it goes on pink. It's the craziest thing. And then it slowly turns kind of a blue gray. It's crazy. So then I'm gonna do a third one. So that's how I've started my T scale, okay? I have a highlight, I have a midtone, and I have a shadow. I've given them all one layer. When I come back in a minute, the midtone is going to have another layer and the shadow is going to have another layer. Then I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm going to come back and do a third layer only on the shadow. So it'll be one layer, two layers, three layers. But what I would like to do first is I'm just gonna let that dry because when I'm painting with it, I'm gonna to wanna to dry in between layers. That's kind of how I like to work. So for my coffee, getting my brush again, I'm gonna pull off my coffee cup and just let you see it. So unless you want to get some dark, gritty, gritty values, which are beautiful, don't scrub the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like though. It does look pretty cool. So I'm going to just kind of work in the top, load my brush. That's what it means when we put any kind of substance on our brush, we load it and then we wipe, wipe. And then I'm going to just again, make a little square, so light you can hardly see it, but that's the idea. I'm gonna do that again. Looks a little bit darker, but I promise I wiped it off. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, so ideally it'll go light, mid-tone, dark. The middle one did that one on there too. It's pretty weird. All right, I'm gonna let them dry a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of give you some guidelines about what to do when you're using these. So a couple things that I like to do, I'll show you on the coffee because it's a little darker and a little easier to see. Um, if you want it to be kind of dark and gritty, you can see I scrubbed the bottom and this is kind of what it ends up looking like when you scrub the bottom. It gets some really kind of cool values and darks and all sorts of things. If you ever end up getting coffee grounds on your artwork, and this has it, don't try to get them off right then. Let everything dry, and then in a little while, once it's dry, like at the end of your project or at the end of letting everything dry, that layer, you're just going to kind of um, just kind of shake them off really gently. Don't try to scrub it. Don't try to blow on it because you might spit on it, <laughs> as you all know from our art class. Sometimes charcoal drawings get ruined that way. Um, so that's an option for you to do. Another thing is when I'm working with washes, my students always know that we work light to dark. So if I'm painting and I want to eventually get to something dark, I try to not go straight in with the super dark. I try to just work my way up. So I do a layer of light, I pause, I go work on another place or go do something else. I come back and I do another layer, sort of like what we're doing with our washes right now. 
So I'm letting it kind of dry a little bit. Um, another thing that I really encourage students to do <clears throat> is to have multiple things to be working on. So for example, I've got maybe a landscape. I might wanna be working on the mountain range over here. And then once I've given it a layer of values, I'll move into the foreground and I'll work on like a pond or something. And then once I've added value to that, I might move over here and work on, I don't know, like a little house in the background or something. So I kind of want to be moving to different places at different times because you don't want your paper to get overworked, which means if you've ever seen it where you scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and layered and layered and it looks like it's shrilling up the, like kind of, um, shredding up the paper. I was thinking about a sweater pill. It kind of pills the paper too, but it kind of shreds the paper. Um, that means that you're kind of being too rough with your paper and you really need to let it mellow and let it dry a little bit. All right, so we've let our values dry kind of on that note. I can feel them. Um, they feel okay. They don't feel like I would pick up any value if I put a paper towel on them, but they don't feel totally dry, but we're going to go for it. All right, so this was my tea. Look at that. It's blue. It was pink. Oxidation, y'all, I think. I don't teach science, so someone let me know. All right, so I give it another layer of the tea. This is a very light layer. I wipe, I wipe. I do another layer on this one also. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to see what it looks like when I build up those values so that I can make a value drawing. I can make a landscape with just this. I can make a portrait. I can make a still life object, um, whatever I might want to do. All right, feeling the coffee. I feel like the coffee dries a little bit quicker. Um, I don't know why that is. I'm sure some people do. Um, I don't know, it might be that I don't use I don't know. I was just trying to make it up. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just going to be frank with you and tell you I don't know why. All right, so middle one. Add one more layer. I wipe, wipe. I just love the way coffee looks. It just looks like a brown ink. It's so warm and it's so beautiful. All right, so I've added more to those. Some more things that can help you. This is like a super quick watercolor kind of um, little sneaky hint tutorial. Um, when you're working on a big area or just connecting kind of areas, I really like to move my brush a lot, almost like it's an ice skate on the ice, like it never lifts up. It never, um, you know, lifts its foot or anything. The reason for that is I really hate for my drawings when I can see where I've stopped and started. I like for things to feel really smooth, and I know sometimes students do too. So it'll prevent it from getting kind of like that streaky look that you might not like. Another thing that you can do is if you get too dark, oh my gosh, I've added so much dark, I did not mean to do that. Take your paper towel really quick and you can lift. That's what that's called is lifting. Now, in this area, I can already tell I'm starting to shred my paper a tiny bit, which again, it's fine. This is mixed media paper. Mixed media paper is great for using watercolor, for using ink, and for using coffee and tea because it's meant to get wet. If you have notebook paper or typing paper at your house, um, you go for this. I want you to try it because doing that is better than not doing it. Um, however, you may find that your paper will tear and your paper will kind of get a hole poke through it because it's so thin and it's not meant to be wet. Mixed media paper is meant to be wet. Um, if you have any white construction paper, that might be kind of fun. It's a teeny tiny bit sturdier than typing paper. Um, poster board, I'm trying to think of any readily available things. Um, just try it. You know, I think trying it's better than not anytime. All right, so we've got our values. I think that they're ready for one more go through. So remember, now I'm only going to do it on the very last one. Look at that pink on top of that blue. That is just so neat to me. All right. I'm going to do one more layer of the coffee. Mm, looks so good. Something that I love about the coffee is that it gets such like a kind of hard edge on it, like a really crispy edge when you kind of lay it down as a wash. You can kind of see what I mean like here and soon it will have it there. Like if you've ever spilled coffee on a piece of paper and you didn't mean to and it had sort of like a burnt little edge to it. Um, maybe I notice things <laughs> like that more than people, but I really love the way it looks. 
Um, the tea is a little softer on the edges. Um, again, I think it's because it has more water in it. So um, if you want to keep doing this, if you want to kind of keep doing your drawings, um, you can always, I would suggest keeping tea, keeping coffee. Um, I would put them in something where you can have them in the fridge. Um, we actually like to brew this tea at my house and put it in the refrigerator. This is actually, if you've ever had like the pink passion tea at Starbucks that's got ice in it, this is actually the same tea that they use. Um, I just really like having it iced at home. So that's what I drink and I keep it for like a week in the fridge and it should stay fine. And you're painting with it, so you're not even drinking it. So don't worry about it. Coffee, you don't want to leave just sitting out. It will start to mold. So you want to make sure, um, you know, not in like a day, but you want to make sure just to be, you know, clean um, that you put it maybe in like a little bottle or jar and keep it in the fridge. Let your parents know, hey, it's not drinking coffee, it's painting coffee. All right, so you can see that my values have gotten darker. You can see that's my tea, that's my coffee. Um, I would just really encourage you to play with it. I think this is something that can be really beautiful and really expressive and really fun. Just make sure you wash out your um, brushes when you're done because you don't want to get them ruined. You wanna take good care of them so they last a long time. So I would love to see what you end up making.